Welcome to Horn Canna Farm. Today we're going to be talking about canna leaf rollers. My name is Madison and I'm a fifth generation team member here at Horn Canna Farm. Throughout the years, we have accumulated quite a bit of knowledge on canna leaf rollers and we'd like to share some of that with you today. Let's start with what are leaf rollers? They are a family of insects that can be very damaging to various plants. There are multiple species of leaf rollers and most of them target fruiting and ornamental trees. Leaf rollers can be found in Texas and along the East Coast, including many Southern and Midwestern states. The common canna leaf roller and lesser canna leaf roller specialize in cannas. Cannas are the only plant that hosts these two species of leaf rollers. The leaf roller life cycle begins when the egg is laid by the adult moth, which then hatches into a larva or caterpillar. Next is the pupa or cocoon stage, which finally matures into an adult moth. For both canna leaf roller species, the larvae stage caterpillars transform into the large brown skipper butterfly. Canna leaf rollers are very prolific. Their life cycles complete every 40 days, and so they can have three to four generations per year. They overwinter as larvae in the leaves or stems of the canna plant. These adult moths will lay their eggs on the large canna leaves. After the larvae hatch, they spin silk and roll themselves inside the leaves. The larva will feed on leaves from the inside out and then will move on to another roll if they eat their way out of the previous leaf. They use leaves to build shelters and house and feed caterpillars as they develop. They are most destructive during the larva stage when the voracious caterpillars carry about their sole purpose of eating plant matter. Common leaf rollers chew at the edge of the leaf and create a pocket, as you can see here. Typically, the common leaf roller is smaller. It can be as short as a quarter of an inch long. The handiwork of the lesser canna leaf roller creates tubes from unfurled leaves that are tacked shut, keeping the leaves from opening. On the left, you can see the tiny stitches of the lesser canna leaf roller. They really look like they were sewn with a needle and thread. The lesser leaf roller is typically longer and thicker, closer to an inch long. In the photo on the right, you can see an unfurled leaf with lots of frass or caterpillar poop. Because leaf rollers are so prolific, they can take down an entire flower bed in a short amount of time. Here are a few examples of how rogue leaf rollers can affect your flower beds. Fortunately, we have several suggestions on controlling canna leaf roller populations. With a few interventions, you can get on top of these pesky caterpillars and enjoy cannas all summer long. The first step of treating a leaf roller problem is environmental control. This is removing affected leaves, removing the caterpillars themselves, and also scratching the eggs off of the leaves. The affected leaves are easy to spot because they are rolled up and often webs secure the leaves together. Removing rolled leaves effectively and immediately gets rid of the leaf roller habitat. To treat severe cases of canna leaf rollers, you can even remove most or all of the leaves to rejuvenate the plant. Cannas are fast growing and should rebound quickly. But remember, any foliage that is removed needs to be tossed in the garbage, not the compost pile. Next is organic or chemical control. There are a couple of organic pesticides available on the market, as well as other chemicals. We recommend choosing the one that you are most comfortable with. BT is the product that we primarily recommend to our customers. But regardless of which product you choose, the most effective technique is to target the larvae right after hatching. BT is an organic product that attacks leaf rollers and other caterpillars. You apply it to both the tops and the bottoms of the plant during the larva stage. It attacks the leaf rollers by disrupting their digestive system and disrupting their life cycle. BT can be found online or at your local garden center. There are several brands available. We have not found that the brand used makes any different in efficacy. 
we recommend staying consistent with weekly applications of Bt. Spinosad is another organic product that acts a little differently than Bt. Bt disrupts digestion, whereas Spinosad causes paralysis of the larva. Our research has found that Spinosad may actually act faster than Bt and can last up to four weeks. It's also safe for adult butterflies. Neem oil is another product that our customers have had success with. Neem oil is also a product that can be sprayed on the leaves. You can buy concentrated neem oil and dilute it with water per the package instructions, or you can buy a spray bottle that is ready to go. We haven't tried this, but some online resources recommend a ratio four to one of water to vinegar to mix together and spray on the larva. Like I said, we haven't tried this, but if you do, you'll have to let us know how it goes. Acephate is a last ditch effort because of its damage to beneficial insects. This is not our preferred product, but in extreme cases of leaf rollers, some of our customers have had success. You mix three quarters of a tablespoon per one gallon of water and apply it three times at three day intervals. The third category is biologic control. Leaf rollers are an important part of the food chain and have many natural predators. For example, leaf roller larvae are hosts to several species of parasitic flies and wasps. Lacewings, assassin bugs, ground beetles, and spiders are also predators of this pest. One option is to purchase lacewing flies. Lacewings are a natural predator to leaf rollers and will devour the leaf roller eggs and caterpillars. You can purchase lacewing eggs online or in stores and scatter them onto your canna leaves in early spring. By creating a welcoming environment for beneficial insects or adding your own beneficial insects, you can naturally help control your pest population. For most effective control of canna leaf rollers, we recommended a multifaceted approach involving the environment or pruning the area, a chemical or organic control using things such as BT or the other methods, and then also the biologic aspect where you attract or add beneficial insects. However, the last piece is prevention, which is also quite important. To prevent canna leaf rollers, it's so important to completely get rid of all canna foliage at the end of the growing season. This is true for those who dig the cannas at the end of every season and for those who overwinter their cannas in the ground. This is because larvae will live dormant in the foliage over the winter months and come back the following spring. That's all we have today for tips and tricks to keep your cannas safe from leaf rollers. We wish you the best of luck with these pesky caterpillars and as always are available if you have any other questions. Feel free to send us an email, drop us a comment, or use the contact us link in the description below. Thank you for joining us.